Why didn't the referee call four clear penalties for Chelsea? Why were Motta and Van Persie sent off? Why? Where does this power come from? Pep won a Champions League in a way that I would be embarrassed to win. Those are the words of Jose Mourinho in a press conference back in 2011. Then manager of Real Madrid, Mourinho's suggestion that Barcelona received preferential treatment from referees was typical of the bitterness that embodied his rivalry with Guardiola during that period. But in light of recent events, could this suggestion actually be true? Barcelona are now facing allegations that for nearly two decades they paid a company owned by a senior refereeing official over 7 million euros to influence match results. And this is far more than just rumours out of the gossip columns. They have been officially charged with corruption after Spanish prosecutors filed a complaint against two of the club's former presidents, José María Bartomeu and Sandro Rosell, on March the 10th. Of course, the club adamantly denies the accusations. Their current president, Joan Laporta, delivered an emotional speech denouncing the charges as a, quote, ferocious attack by those who, quote, seek to hurt us. But if Barcelona are found guilty, the repercussions could be catastrophic. So what exactly has happened? How does the rest of Spain feel about the corruption charges? And what could the punishments be for Barca if found guilty? In this Football Daily Explained, we are back in Catalonia to break down the latest scandal to rock the camp now. The man at the centre of this scandal is José María Enríquez Negreira. Though he was previously not a household name, Enríquez Negreira wielded plenty of power in Spanish football as the vice president of the Technical Committee of Referees between 1994 and 2018. In May 2022, tax inspectors alerted prosecutors to 33 payments worth 7.3 million euros made by Barcelona to two companies owned by Enríquez Negreira, Dasnil95 and Nilsat. The club don't deny these took place, but have insisted they hired a quote, external consultants that provided information related to professional refereeing, a normal service Josep Maria Bartomeu claims multiple clubs received. But this is the only known case where payments were made by a club to a person of genuine influence within the Spanish FA. What's more, Enriquez Negreira's testimony to the Spanish tax authorities about the nature of his work certainly raised some alarm bells. As reported by El País, it read, FC Barcelona considered that the team was harmed and other teams were favoured. What FC Barcelona wanted was to make sure that no decisions were made against the club, that everything was neutral. He then named Bartomeu and Rosell, saying he met the former presidents at most six times a year so they were calm, before explaining how his service included advice on how players should behave towards certain referees and ensuring that the competition committee was not made up entirely of judges from Madrid. Enriquez Negreira denies that this constitutes favouring Barca for money. However, his comments that no documentation exists of his work with the Blaugrana because it was all done verbally has drawn further scrutiny, while Bartomeu has whipped up even more confusion by saying he never dealt with Enriquez Negreira, who he initially didn't realise was even involved in Dasnil. In an interview with The Athletic, he claimed that it was Enrique Negreira's son, Javier, who provided the technical reports, and that he did so, quote, with great professionalism. The contradicting reports and accounts suggest someone has not got their story straight. Enrique Negreira is facing corruption charges, as are Rizal and Bartomeu, while two former officials from Bartomeu's time in charge, Oscar Grau and Albert Soler, are also facing prosecution, this time with false administration and falsifying a commercial document. Major charges which, as we will explore, carry considerable punishments. But before that, the reaction in Spain. Sevilla and Espanyol were the first two Spanish clubs to publicly comment on the case, asking for clarity on the situation from La Liga and the Spanish FA. 38 out of the 40 clubs in Spain's top two divisions then released a joint statement expressing their deep concern, followed by La Liga's executive committee announcing that they reject and condemn the facts of the case. And for a sense of how the fans feel, look no further than Barcelona's recent trip to Athletic Club. A furious crowd at San Mamés greeted the Catalan giants by throwing fake red and blue banknotes onto the pitch stamped with the word Mafia. There were also chants demanding that Barcelona were relegated to the second division. Afterwards, Xavi spoke of his surprise and disappointment at these actions, saying that while he respected the athletic fans, Barca are being judged before time, which I don't think is good for society. 
His former teammate Gerard Piquet has gone a step further, declaring on live radio that he would set his hand on fire if the allegations were true. The centre-half argued the accusations made no sense and that bribery of this nature would be, quote, kept off the books. In his words, there are simpler ways to do it than going to the vice president of the referees and paying him a salary. There's no logic to that. Piquet also echoed President Laporta's belief that the scandal was an attempt to smear the achievements of Barcelona's golden generation, and they have an unlikely ally backing their corner. Ramon Calderón, who was president of Real Madrid between 2006 and 2009, told Cadena Ser he didn't believe Barcelona had manipulated the referees. The leagues were won by the players, I never had the feeling of being disadvantaged, he declared. I think it is fundamental to respect the presumption of innocence. But Calderon does not represent the whole of Real Madrid. Los Blancos fans have taunted their bitter rivals with chants of La Porta Pay Me outside the Bernabeu, along with their own circulation of fake banknotes insinuating corruption. And Real president Florentino Perez even called an emergency meeting with the club's board of directors to discuss a formal response, citing the quote, utmost concern. Los Merengues were one of the two clubs that did not sign La Liga's joint statement on the case, suggesting they have their own agenda and that could involve pursuing a punishment that brings the title back into their grasp. The outspoken chief of La Liga, Javier Tebas, has made it clear that he expects Joan Laporta to resign if he cannot explain the payments to Enriquez Negreira. Speaking to Spanish news outlet Sport.es, Tebas also speculated that, if guilty, a crime of this nature would ideally warrant a stronger punishment than the recent 15-point deduction Juventus received in Serie A for financial wrongdoing. But any fans hoping for Barcelona to be banished from La Liga should temper their expectations. While the club could be handed a serious fine, La Liga rules state that because of the alleged offences stopped five years ago, they have no grounds to investigate. It's not possible for there to be any sportive punishment from our side, admitted Tebas. These kinds of breaches are time-barred in our rulebook three years after taking place. What's more, the positions of Spain's High Council for Sport and the Spanish FA won't become apparent until the legal process has played out. However, UEFA is not bound by the same rules as La Liga. A clause in their constitution states that Europe's governing body can punish a club found guilty of sporting corruption, meaning Barcelona could face a ban from UEFA competition. And it can't be overstated how damaging that would be for the Blaugrana. In 22-23, qualifying for the Champions League group stage earned each club a minimum of 15.64 million euros, with an extra 2.8 million paid out for each win. That prize pot swells the further you go, to the point that last season's winners, Real Madrid, netted 83.2 million euros. With a 12-point lead at the top of La Liga, Barca will almost certainly qualify for next season's Champions League, and the riches on offer are more vital than ever, given they exhausted Laporta's infamous economic levers to generate quick cash and remain saddled with a wage bill that is reportedly 20% over La Liga's maximum squad spend limit. The club are already suffering the repercussions of failing to progress far in Europe this term, after La Liga invalidated Gavi's recent contract extension to leave his future at the camp now in doubt. Without a resolution soon, the club can also forget bringing Lionel Messi back to his rightful home, unless he does so on a charitable basis. Put simply, if Barcelona are found guilty of corruption and UEFA boots them out of the Champions League, then the club could be thrown into financial turmoil once again. And this time, it may be far more difficult to escape. But beyond sporting punishments, the individuals at the heart of the scandal face the very real possibility of going to prison. Because the alleged crimes were sustained over an extended period, it falls into the category of continued corruption. This carries a much heavier sentence than fines or professional disqualification for those convicted, including up to four years in jail. So at worst, Jose Maria Enriquez Negreira, Sandro Rizel, Josep Bartomeu, plus Oscar Grau and Albert Soler could face time behind bars. It's perhaps no wonder then that Bartomeu has launched such a staunch defence of his actions, saying Barcelona have never been helped by referees, much more the opposite. Only time will tell if the courts agree. Barcelona may well be innocent, but in the court of public opinion, this scandal has already triggered another damaging assault on Barcelona's reputation. Xavi may be turning things around on the pitch, but he might be helpless to save the club otherwise if it's decided that they really did manipulate referees to gain an advantage. 
So that was our investigation into the allegations currently facing Barcelona. But how do you think this will play out? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to Football Daily as we do deep dives like this every single week and put out other content every single day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.